In the 1930s, a gentleman headed to a ballroom for an evening of dancing with friends. The night started out like any other. After he arrived, he spotted the most gorgeous woman across the dance floor. He had never seen her at the ballroom before. She was a young, stunning blonde, dressed in a long, lacy, white ball gown. He immediately asked her to dance. They spent the evening on the dance floor and even shared a kiss. As the evening came to an end, he offered her a ride home. Earlier in the evening, she had told him exactly where she lived. After they got into his car, she told him to drive in the opposite direction of where she lived. As he drove down the road from the ballroom, she told him to stop in front of Resurrection Cemetery. As she got out of the car, she told him, this is where I must leave you. And she also told him not to follow her. She approached the gate of the cemetery and vanished. The following day, he drove to her home to make sure she was all right and had made it home safe the night before. A woman answered the door. He asked if he could speak to Mary. And to his surprise, he was told that Mary had died in a car accident five years earlier. Hi, I'm Mindy. Welcome to the Missing Link channel. Every urban legend and unsolved mystery is just one missing link away from being solved. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a video and help us find that missing link. This story takes place in Chicago in 1936. Resurrection Cemetery is located in a suburb of Chicago called Justice. It is one of the largest cemeteries in the United States with an area of over 540 acres. The Catholic Archdiocese maintained the cemetery, which opened in 1912. There are over 150,000 graves and a mausoleum with 5,300 crypts. The cemetery is located about two miles from the ballroom on Archer Avenue. Let's go back to the evening this story took place, back at the ballroom. The gentleman's name was Jerry Paulus. Jerry stated they didn't talk a lot, but she did tell him her name was Mary and where she lived on the south side of Chicago. He was captivated by the mysterious woman. After they spent an evening of dancing, he offered to give her a ride home. After they got to his car, she said, well, you might as well take me down to Archer Road. Jerry was confused because he knew that wasn't the right direction to take her home, but she insisted. I want to go out to Archer Road. Then he was even more confused when she told him to stop and pull over outside of Resurrection Cemetery. Remember, it was late at night, definitely not the time to venture into a dark cemetery. But Mary exited his vehicle and she vanished right in front of the entrance of the cemetery. When she disappeared, Jerry explained that he was speechless, bewildered, perplexed. He followed her request and didn't go after her. When Jerry went to her home the following day and found out that Mary had died five years earlier, Mary's mother showed Jerry a photo of Mary. It was definitely a match to the mysterious woman he had danced with the night before and the woman who had vanished at the cemetery. The more Jerry thought about his previous evening, the more questions he had. The one thing he thought was so strange was how cold Mary had felt to the touch. Her hands were ice cold. Actually, now that he had time to think about it, he said she was as cold as a corpse. This may have been one of the first times Resurrection Mary made an appearance, but it definitely 
wasn't her last. Over the next 80 years, there has been over 36 sightings. Resurrection Mary has been seen at local dance halls, walking along the road between the ballroom and the cemetery, in taxis, and inside the cemetery gates. Her most common request is for a ride home. She is always described as a beautiful, quiet young woman. In her late teens or early 20s, she has a slim build, blonde hair, and blue eyes. She is always wearing a long, lacy, white ball gown, and she is always cold to the touch. Richard Crow, who is a historian of Chicago, stated, I think that of all the ghost stories worth believing in, Resurrection Mary is the one with the best documentation. The witnesses that I found are remarkably level-headed and they're primarily blue collar, middle-class types who have steady jobs and who have no other major claims to psychic encounters in their lives. There have been many reports of taxi drivers being flagged down by a woman fitting Mary's description, looking for a ride home after an evening of dancing. She instructs a taxi driver to go down Archer Avenue and she vanishes by the cemetery gate, or sometimes she even dances right through the locked gate and into the darkness of the cemetery. In the 1970s, a taxi driver picked up a young lady fitting Mary's description. She asked for a ride to a dance club not far from Resurrection Cemetery. She left the taxi without paying. The driver immediately followed her inside where she disappeared. In 1979, a woman dressed in white flagged down a taxi cab outside Resurrection Cemetery. But she never even made it into the cab because she disappeared into thin air while walking towards the cab. Later that same year, another cab driver named Ralph picked up a woman on Archer Avenue. She had on a white dress and asked to be taken to Resurrection Cemetery. She didn't say anything during the drive, except that the snow had come early that year. As he pulled up to the front gates, he explained what he saw when he turned around. When I turned, she was gone, vanished, and the door never opened. May the good Lord strike me dead. It never opened. Resurrection Mary has been spotted at different dance halls, lounges, and clubs over the years throughout this area of Chicago. She has danced with various men and sometimes vanishes right before their eyes. Two men recall dancing with a young woman in white and offered to give her a ride home at the end of the evening. This woman sat in the front seat between the two men. They drove down Archer Avenue and when they passed the front gate of Resurrection Cemetery, she vanished from inside the vehicle. Many of these sightings were from the 1970s when major renovations were taking place at the cemetery. Mary was spotted twice at Harlow's, a local dance club. She had curly blonde hair and looked pale. She seemed to be wearing what looked like a white faded wedding dress. However, security at the door, who carded everyone, did not remember anyone entering the lounge or leaving the lounge fitting that description. There are numerous sightings of Mary outside the cemetery as well. A man driving down Archer Avenue sees a young woman dressed in white. She asks for a ride to Resurrection Cemetery. He parked outside the main gate of the cemetery and she got out of his car and started walking towards the gate. She disappeared, but this time she reappeared inside the cemetery, holding the bars and peering through the gate back at him. 
only to vanish once again. The man walked up to the gate where she had just been, and he saw handprints, which looked like they had been burned into the iron bars of the gate. He even called the police because he was worried that she was locked inside. The police arrived, but did not find anyone inside the cemetery. But they did see that the bars looked to be pried apart and a woman's handprint remained. In 1980, a husband and wife named Claire and Mark Rudnicki were driving down Archer Avenue. Claire explained, I really didn't think there was any ghost. You hear these stories and these old ghost tales, but it never happened to me. But now I must say, I think I'm changing my mind. I was just looking out the window as we were going down the street and on the right hand side of the road, there was a girl walking. She was bright, very bright, like illuminating. She was just walking very slowly. I remember thinking, oh my God, it's Resurrection Mary. And I can feel my stomach starting to turn. I was very frightened, I have to admit. It did scare me. Claire's husband Mark said, we all went past it, turned around and came back. But by the time we'd gotten back to where we had originally seen her, it was gone, vanished. In 1989, there was another sighting of a woman fitting Mary's description. A woman named Janet and her friend were driving in front of the cemetery. A young woman ran out in front of their vehicle. Janet describes, there was no impact. There was no bump to say that you know I had hit something, but I know she ran out and I hit her. She was all in white and her hair and the dress were flowing back. It was like a stream backwards, you know, away from her. And I just saw this profile of a young woman. This wasn't the only occurrence of someone thinking they hit a woman near the cemetery. In 1996, Chet, the owner of a lounge not too far from the cemetery, recalls a woman running up, begging him to use his phone. She claimed that she hit a woman with her car, but strangely enough, she couldn't locate the body. Another driver saw the accident and saw the woman get hit by the car. Police were called, but no body was ever found and no evidence was found to show that an accident even occurred. The last common encounter with Resurrection Mary is that people see a woman lying on the side of Archer Avenue. It looks as if she was a victim of a hit and run accident. The police are notified, but when they arrive, the woman's body is no longer there. But in the grass, there seems to be an indentation in the shape of a body. In the 1980s, two teenage boys drove past the cemetery around Christmas. They saw a woman dancing along the road just outside the cemetery. They stopped to watch her. She was a young blonde woman wearing a white old fashioned ball gown. It seemed so bizarre. What an odd place to be dancing, right outside the gates of a cemetery. Many other people drove by, but no one seemed to notice the woman. The boys told their parents what they had witnessed. Their parents had heard the stories of Resurrection Mary growing up. The boys had never heard the legend of Resurrection Mary until that night. A woman named Susan described her encounter. I was out with a friend one night who had just bought a new car. I had not been to Archer Avenue and was itching to go, so we decided to take a drive. First, we stopped to see her boyfriend who was playing in a band at a nearby suburban bar. We said hi, told him we were going for a drive, but did not tell him where. So we proceeded to Chet's Melody Lounge, talked to the regulars, played, the Ballad of Resurrection Mary on the jukebox, and some pool. We left in a couple of hours when 2 a.m. rolled around. 
drove to the cemetery gates, parked, and peered in, seeing the repaired gates and getting a good case of the creeps. On the way home, we joked about giving Mary a ride in the new car. Later that night, my friend Kristen dropped me off at my apartment and went home to hers. As her boyfriend Mike heard the car pull up, he peeked out of the window. Then, not wanting to appear worried and waiting up, he dropped the shade. Kristen let herself in and closed the door. Mike asked, where's Susan? Kristen told him that she dropped me off first. He asked, well, who was in your car with you? To this day, he swears that when he looked out the window, he saw a pale face look back at him from the passenger side of the front seat. A common location for Mary to be seen was at O. Henry's Ballroom on Archer Avenue, which was built in 1921. It was later called Willowbrook Ballroom. In October 2016, there was a fire inside the Willowbrook Ballroom and it was destroyed. There is now a plan to build condos and townhouses on the site of the old ballroom. I doubt Mary will be very happy about this. Legend has it that years ago, a young woman and her boyfriend were spending the evening dancing at O. Henry Ballroom. They got into an argument and the woman left the ballroom in a hurry. It was a cold winter evening and as she walked, her long blonde hair blew in the wind. Not far down the road, she was hit by a vehicle. The driver drove off and left her in the middle of the road to succumb to her injuries. The driver was never located. She was buried in Resurrection Cemetery in a white dress and dancing shoes. People believe that the spirit of this young girl continues to roam the cemetery, Archer Avenue, and the local ballrooms. She enjoys an evening out dancing in her white dress white gloves and dancing shoes, and is looking for a ride home, back to the cemetery. Resurrection Mary is often spotted inside the cemetery. She seems to be floating near one of the graves. She is also seen in section MM and site number 9819. This is the grave of Mary Burgovi. An article from the Chicago Tribune dated March 11th, 1934 reads, Girl killed in crash. John Hiker, 23 years old, was in serious condition in the county hospital yesterday, suffering from a skull fracture incurred Saturday night in an automobile accident in which a companion, Miss Marie Bregovi, 21 years old, was killed. Two other companions, Miss Virginia Rosinski, 22 years old, and John Thole, 25 years old, were severely shaken up and scratched. The machine in which they were riding smashed into an elevated structure at Lake Street and Wacker Drive, which Thole, who was driving, said he failed to see. Apparently, Many accidents have happened at this location. It was a dangerous intersection. A close friend of Marie described the day in greater detail. Marie was a factory worker at the Brat Candy Factory, and she loved to dance. She had short, dark hair. The two girls, Marie and Virginia, were planning a day of shopping. They met the boys and accepted a ride to the shopping area and then planned a date with them for later in the evening where they were going dancing. Just before the accident, the girls switched places in the vehicle and Marie ended up in the front seat when the accident happened. She was ejected out the window when the vehicle hit the elevated structure. She died in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Her parents buried her in Resurrection Cemetery in an orchid colored dress. Some believe Marie Bergovi is Resurrection Mary. Others believe the next story is the true Resurrection Mary. 
In July 1927, another young, beautiful woman named Anna Corcus would die in a car accident. She had blonde hair, blue eyes, and a slim, tall build. She was a devout Catholic and chose to go by the name Mary after the Virgin Mary. Her father was taking her dancing to celebrate her 13th birthday. She had dressed up that night looking older than her real age. They were dancing at the O. Henry Ballroom. On the way home, their car veered off the road, went into the ditch. The car then plunged 25 feet and rolled over. Mary died instantly when the car landed on her, crushing her. Do you think either of these women could be Resurrection Mary? Some argue that one has brunette hair, not blonde, and others argue that the other woman is too young. Some question whether either of these women match the descriptions of Resurrection Mary, but both of these women are named or go by Mary, and they were tragically killed in a car accident around the same time, and both are buried at Resurrection Cemetery. What do you think of the legend of Resurrection Mary? Do you think it is an urban legend, or do you think there is some truth to the story? Do you believe any of the encounters with Resurrection Mary, or do you think people's imaginations are just playing tricks on them? What do you think of the original story of Paul, who was dancing with Mary, gave her a ride. They ended up at the cemetery where she disappeared. And when he looked for her the next day, he was told she died in a car accident years earlier. Either way, whether you believe this is just an urban legend or based in fact, if you happen to be driving down Archer Avenue at night and you see a young, pale, beautiful woman dressed in all white, I wouldn't recommend offering her a ride home. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button so I know you enjoy hearing about mysterious urban legends. Also, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you'll be notified of my future videos. And follow me on social media as well to see what I am working on. As always, have a wonderful day. Watch out for each other and keep looking for that missing link. Love ya and see you in my next video.